Hi, I'm Leanne, the Director of Education at the Squam Lakes Association. I'm glad you are joining me to explore the wonders of the Squam Lake watershed. Today we'll be looking at some blooms, but not these terrestrial blooms, though they are quite lovely. The blooms we'll look at today are found in the waters of Squam, and they sometimes fall victim to mistaken identity. The hot temperatures of July and August are ideal conditions to find these blooms in New Hampshire lakes. This is some kind of green algae that I came across while snorkeling in Squam. I will not even try to ID it since there are over 7,000 species of green algae, 90% of which are found in fresh water, and surprisingly, there are a few instances when green algae is found on land, usually on rocks or trees. Some species have even formed relationships with fungi, which are called lichen. While I don't know the specific type of green algae that I found in Squam, I do know that sometimes it, get, it gets confused with cyanobacteria. Cyanobacteria is sometimes referred to as blue-green algae, which is misleading because it's a bacteria. Interestingly, cyanobacteria may have evolved into the first chloroplast, the structure within plants and green algae where sunlight is turned into food. Both green algae and cyanobacteria are important players in aquatic communities. They provide oxygen, are a food for zooplankton, insects, and snails, and when found in larger mats, like in this picture, they can be home for small animals and maybe even a place to hide. Algae can be indicators of water quality because some species favor different nutrient and pH levels. Under optimal conditions like lots of nutrients, warm water, and sunlight, some species grow in such high density that they form blooms. Cyanobacteria blooms can make the water look like pea soup or turn the water bluish green. They might appear as scum or film on the surface of the water and might smell grassy or septic-like. It's important to be able to tell the difference between green algae and cyanobacteria because certain types of cyanobacteria in very large quantities can be harmful to animals, including us. You can find photos, detailed information about cyanobacteria and current beach advisories at the New Hampshire Department of Environmental Services website. Minimizing the use of fertilizers in yards and gardens, maintaining septic systems, and keeping plants and trees along the shoreline to reduce runoff into the lake are all ways to minimize the risk, risks of excess nutrients entering the water, thus decreasing the chance of cyanobacteria blooms. So, Keep an eye out for blooms, but don't be misled by these green algae blooms. When in doubt, take a photo and submit it along with the online SLA Lake and Watershed Observation form. Keep exploring, enjoying, and caring for Squam, and stay tuned for the next episode of Squam Watershed Wonders.